वेलकम टू मॉड्यूल 36 ऑफ एनपीटीएल एनओसी एन इंट्रोडक्टरी कोर्स ऑन पॉइंट सेट टेपोलॉजी सो वी बिगिन ए न्यू चैप्टर टुडे एन इंट्रोडक्शन टू डायमेंशन थियरी सो डायमेंशन थियरी है सेवरल अप्रोचेस Amongst all these available versions, we will choose one such. Of course, they are all topological dimension theories. Our aim here is reasonably modest one. The depth and width of the subject does not allow us to do much in an elementary course like this. We shall discuss the zero dimensional case thoroughly, and then. take you to the door steps of higher dimensions our final goal will be to prove that the euclidean space rn is exactly of dimension n if you are interested in more details for a comprehensive study okay you are welcome to read this book of hurwitz and walman for this particular dimension theory so model 36 is a tightly separation of sets it has something to do with uh, the separation axioms that we have studied so thoroughly and it has something to do with connectivity right but this is nothing to do with the you know separability of a metric space a separability of a space as such so there are too many different ways the word separation and or its modifications are used so you have to bit careful here somewhat unexpectedly we are beginning with something to do with the connectivity we have seen how connectivity crops up from the concept of continuum in the construction of real numbers the space of real numbers is taken to be of mathematical dimension 1 why i am saying this one is whether it is topological dimension or a vector space dimension and so on various dimension all of them you can call as a mathematical dimension that dimension is 1 the word dimension in physics has slightly different connotation okay so in all mathematical dimension the space of real numbers must be having dimension 1 so we begin our study at one stage before that namely understanding zero dimensional space okay for example if you are studying linear algebra vector space the zero dimensional space is just a zero vector space that is nothing more than that so that simplicity makes uh, the life very easy with linear algebra but that is not the case in topology okay so we are trying we are going to spend considerable amount of time in studying zero dimensional space itself one of the peculiarity of connectedness concept is that the definition is in the negation okay in fact we define disconnected space and then if the space is not disconnected then we say it is connected so we would like to come to the opposite of this property namely disconnectivity okay so we are going to discuss certain stronger forms of negation of connectivity namely disconnectivity which may be termed as stronger forms of separation axioms namely frege space t not t1 space t2 t t2 space t3 space and so on regularity normality and so on okay so all those things will come into picture now ala indirectly so let us begin with the definition here given any two disjoint subsets a and b in a topological space we say 
they are separated if there exists disjoint open sets u and v such that x is the union of u and v both u and v are disjoint right so that is why i have wrote in sq cup here a is contained inside u and b is contained inside v after that you can assume both of them are open u and v are open or u and v are closed it is the same thing so the the term here i am going to use is that a and b are separated okay subsets of of uh, x of course to be separated first of all they have to be disjoint people also use the word disconnected uh, you know for this one but that is uh, to uh some more confusing for me so i don't want to use that terminology here okay uh, such a writing u and v like this is called a disconnection okay so what we will call this as separation so we will have a, we had such a notation already in treatise also so we are just writing it as x equal to u vertical bar v you remember that so that notation also i may use sometimes in any case starting with disjoint closed subsets we have enclosed them in u and v the only thing is totality of u and v is the whole space x is the extra thing otherwise this is just like normality right so you are reminded of normality okay so what here is is a stronger thing namely in normality the union of two open sets you contain you you get is not the whole space they are disjoint fine but here it is the whole space that makes both of them closed also okay so this is going to be quite a strong uh, condition no doubt it implies normality as soon as there are disjoint non empty closed sets in a space x this property implies that the space is disconnected so even that is true whereas there are plenty of normal spaces which are connected right whereas if you have this property okay disconnectivity for every disjoint row sets okay then the space will have to be disconnected so this is very strong hausdorffness regularity normality etc can be termed as local properties whereas the one which we have introduced now is a global property okay so let us consider the following uh, conditions on a topological space to make sense out of these things you should have the topological spaces at least two points a singleton set you know singleton uh, topology is both connected and it will satisfy these properties also so don't get confused with that at least you assume that there are at least two points in the space then consider this four different uh, axioms of disconnectedness okay axioms of separation whatever word you want to you there is going to be some confusion okay so i can call it the axioms of separation because i have in included i have introduced the notation s not s1 s2 and s3 just to you know include people who are using this kind of terminology i have put that as a title also that's all so s not just says connected components of x are all singletons any two distinct singletons in x are separated is s1 any closed subset a is separated from any point outside a any two disjoint closed subsets in x are separated okay so s not s1 s2 s3 you can see that these three things are one stronger than the other but this s not seems to be 
not in the in this list why should it this is odd man out it looks like it but this is the one which connects the connectivity with these properties in this section we shall do a comparative study of these conditions the four conditions above okay and indicate their importance note that s not is somewhat different from other three statements let us give it a more descriptive name sometimes i will use that but for safety i will use it as s not only okay so any space which satisfies s not will be called totally disconnected okay i want to caution you that different authors may use same terminology to mean different things so their total disconnectedness may be different for example one of the books which i am very much uh, using and respect uh, i have a lot of respect for this one is simmons book on modern analysis and topology, topology and modern analysis okay in this book a space satisfying our condition si is called totally disconnected s1 is called totally disconnected not s not okay we shall see that property s not relates the connectivity to the other three axioms of separability here all right so let us uh, let's go ahead s not is seen to be hereditary if something is totally disconnected namely all the singletons are the components then for any subspace the singletons will be component so it's hereditary it can be seen without much difficulty that s1 and s2 are also hereditary okay s1 is hereditary is just like hausdorff's nest being hereditary s2 is hereditary is just like regularity is hereditary when you come to s3 it is similar to normality just the way normality fails to be hereditary this will also fail to be hereditary exactly same reason okay but it is weakly hereditary in the sense that closed subspace of an of a s3 space will be s3 okay starting with a closed subspace and then taking clue closed subsets inside that they will be closed in the original space also then if you take a separation in the original space then you can restrict it to the uh, the subspace then you are done so that is the proof that it is weakly hereditary okay now si s1 implies s0 what is s1 any two points any two distinct points there is a separation okay if there is a separation they can't be in the same component so if any two points cannot be in the same component all the connected components are singleton that's all okay it is quite of one people confuse s0 with si s1 so caution s0 does not imply s1 we will see as some example soon okay unfortunately the word totally disconnected is used for this one also so that if i some authors so you have to be careful with that all right let us go ahead if x satisfies s2 then every point in x has a neighborhood system consist of consisting of open as well as closed sets they was those things are called clopen sets and conversely so this easy this this could have been taken as a definition of s2 why take a point 
take a closed set away from that or take a closed set and take a point outside that which is same thing as taking an open set and taking a point inside that then what we had you have a closed uh, clo clo open and closed subset clo clo open sets right that clopen set means are open and closed you take the complement that will be separation okay so both ways i mean this argument can be seen both ways so s2 if filled on leaf every point of x has a you know base local base consisting of clopen sets s0 s1 and s2 are all productive also once again the proof is similar to proving that hausdorffness and uh, what is the other one regularity are productive in these two cases this case is just like proving product of product of connected species is connected it's much simpler than this one product of disconnected space is totally disconnected space is totally disconnected it's like that's what you have to prove okay so it is similar but let us just have a look at the first one why why s not is productive okay suppose each xi is a family of you know xi is a family of spaces which satisfy s0 now i am taking a is a subset of product space and a is connected okay actually i am saying connected component with more than one point then i should get a contradiction all right ai a is a subset with connected component has more than one point in actually just a connected set with more than one point give you a contradiction that's all then there exists xy in a and an index i such that xi is not equal to yi because they are different at least one coordinate must be different but then if you look at the projection of a on ith coordinate pi i of a this will be a connected subset because it's a it's a image of a image of a connected set under continuous function right so it's a connected subset of xi with more than one point because xi is not equal to yi right that is a contradiction because we have assumed that connected components of xi are singleton therefore the product satisfies s0 the converse why the converse is true suppose the product satisfies s0 but then each coordinate space can be thought of as a subspace of the product space right so this argument we have used several times x1 cross x2 if you look at x1 cross one point will be a subspace of x x cross y x, x1 cross x2 but it is homeomorphic to x1 so as a subspace because it is hereditary it will be s not so each coordinate space is s not which same thing as each xi is s not okay so i will leave the other things here namely productivity of s1 and s2 as a entertaining exercise to you okay you should do at least that much so that you will be familiar with this concept okay the earlier you do them the better so in before reading the next uh, before coming to the next module try to do this exercise so that you will be uh, completely familiar completely you know thorough with the definition at least in the most general situation none of these conditions imply any other so i said this looks like stronger 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 okay so let us see why they are stronger what is the in what sense they are stronger under additional conditions there will be implications one way or the other this is what we concentrate upon for some time when s not implies s2 implies s3 etc 
other way around and so on. This is what we are going to do. Just like the usual separation axioms, Hausdorffness, regularity, normality, etc. The first key is the freshness. If you ad admit that all the spaces are T1 spaces, then automatically S3 will imply S2 will imply S1 implies S0. Implies S0. Okay. Exactly same reason as T4 implies T3 implies T2 implies T1. Exactly same way. First you have to assume that you know it is T1. Otherwise, just normality does not imply regularity. Same way S3 may not imply S2. As soon as points are closed, S3 will imply S2 because in S2 I have to take only a closed set and a point. Okay, disjoint close a closed set and a point outside. They will be disjoint closed subsets, so you can apply S3 and come back to S2. Similarly, in S1 I have to take disjoint two two distinct elements, but they can be treated as disjoint closed sets. And I have already seen that S1 implies S0. Right? Why? Because any two points are disconnected here. Dis, uh, you know, there is a separation. Means they are not in the same connected component. So this part is easier without the T1 axiom. Also, this part we have already seen. So under T1 they are like this. So from now onwards. We shall always assume that our space is T1 space. Then we will try to see whether we can come back. Okay. And that is where we have to, maybe we have to put more and more conditions. Next, note that each of S0, S1, S2, and S3 respectively is strong form of freshness. You know, Hausdorffness, regularity, and normality, respectively. Any connected metric space with more than one point. By the way, why S not implies freshness? Tell me. It is I say it is stronger than that. Connected components are singletons. Singletons are connected components. Connected components are always closed. Therefore, singletons are closed. Okay. Any metric space with more than one point will serve as an example, which is actually T5 space, right? But does not satisfy any of the S0, S1, S2, and S3. Only thing you have to put is connectivity. Okay, none of the spaces S not S one S two S three are connected spaces. Oh, that is the meaning of why why this S not is the you know is the connect <laughs> it brings the you know, connection between connect connectivity and separation. Okay. So before proceeding further, we shall examine some examples now. It turns out that all these examples are separable metric spaces and satisfy S2. Why I am doing this one? Because finally we are interested in dimension theory developed by Wallman and Horowitz, right? So there, the separation, separability, sorry, the separability means there is a countable dense subset. Separable metric space is a blanket assumption. Okay. So let us examine these uh, examples. They are somewhat out of the, your way so far. Any countable metric space satisfies S two. 
for given any point x and a neighborhood of x choose r positive such that b r of x is inside u now let x1 x2 xn be an enumeration of points of b r of x other than x itself because b r of x is countable it's a countable my whole matrix space is countable right so i'm just writing down labeling all the other elements they may be finite they may be infinite doesn't matter the dot 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 i am not saying that it is infinite it is countable that's all choose a real number r prime such that 0 less than r prime less than r and such that r prime is not the value d x x i so d x x i as i range over 1 2 3 and n and so on will give you as only countable number of real numbers okay between 0 and r there are uncountably many so i choose one r prime which is not equal to any of them it follows that the open ball of radius r prime around x is contained inside u because r prime is less than r but boundary of r prime x wherein equality occurs that is empty because equality occurs they are distinct from all this x i c c that's why the boundary is empty whenever you have an open set with boundary is empty it is a closed set also okay therefore x is b r prime x union the complement is also open is disjoint union x is here right and this b r of x prime is contained inside you so you have got a closed open subset okay so so what we have shown is every point has a neighborhood system consisting of closed open subset so that is the s2 that we have seen earlier any subspace of r which is not which does not contain any open interval satisfies s2 like we have been studying all these examples quite some time q r minus q that's irrational cantor set these are all examples of s2 okay namely for each point you can find a neighborhood such as the boundary of the neighborhood is empty that is the that is the nice way of remembering this s2 the subspace q power n of all points in rn all of whose coordinates are rational okay q is contained inside i you take q power contained inside r power n. that also is by s2 all that i have to do is given a point use coordinate rectangular boxes okay with one of the coordinate irrational then the entire box will not be inside q so boundary of this entire entire box open box will be empty as far as qn is concerned so similarly the subspace i power n of all of of rn of all points whose coordinates are irrational the other way around okay other way this is not complement by the way huh? this here all points are rational here all points are irrational so that also argument is same thing okay so this also satisfies us uh, so sir mm -hmm. so from 2 uh, q and irrational are s to the power product also will be automatically s to the power one way of looking also yeah yeah you can use that here because s2 is productive right so you can use that one also no problem moreover now comes you see now i am mixing up for this you will have to use arguments you know down to <laughs> this way not products the subspace r 2 comma 
two up for one one I have used here R two one of all points in R two. So that uh, upper subscript corresponds to the where we are taking, but the lower subscript is exactly one of whose coordinate is here rational. Okay, x comma y you look at either x is rational or y is rational. If both are irrational or both are rational, I am not taking them. Okay, so this space is also S two. So to see this one, you will have to you can't use products and so on. It is not a product space now. So you have to directly say that for each point, you must be able to get a neighborhood such that the boundary of the neighborhood is empty. Okay, an open subset so the boundary of that is empty. That is what you have to do. So how do you do that? Each point of this space can be enclosed in an arbitrary small rectangle. Whose vertices are rational? Okay, if vertices are rational, they are not inside R two one. Remember that. Only one of them must be rational, right? That's for if the vertices are not inside this one now. And then what are the sides? The sides have slopes plus minus pi by four. So they are not rect. They are not uh, coordinate uh, lines now. Okay, so slides plus minus pi by four, which just means that they are points x comma x comma x, or x comma minus x, or minus x comma x of that nature, right? Or x comma plus something, and plus something means what? That plus comes from one of the coordinates of these uh, end points, the vertices. But but they are all rational. So if x, comma y, the difference will be what? Di di difference will be again uh, rational. So both of them cannot be rational. So slope uh, plus minus pi by four means that. Okay. So the boundary, this boundary of this rectangle is not a point. Is not contained. No, no point of that one is contained inside R two one intersection that is empty. So therefore, this is S two. This satisfies S two. You try to do that inside R three, then you will have a lot of problems. This even this argument won't work. This line with the slope plus minus pi seems to work only for <laughs> only for R equal to two now. n equal to 2 but we have other ways of dealing with it here start with two indices m and n m less than equal to n that's all okay some numbers again similar notation r n m denote the subspace of points inside r n exactly m of the coordinates are rational the same construction This two is replaced by n, and one is replaced by m. Okay, this space is a generalization of the above example. However, the proof of this that it is it satisfies S two is not straightforward. At least the method that we did in four doesn't work. Try, try it. Of course, you have to wait, and then after some 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 stage, I will give you the proof. Okay, so that is bit involved proof here. Just take R three here. Okay, instead of four, and so instead of two, then you can take any m. Then the problem will be there. n equal to n i think we have already considered this one you see that to be fall inside this example qn right here yeah, here qn you see rn if you take all the coordinates are uh, rational is qn so that is already so it's a special case right so 
the problem is only when it is smaller then you have problem also when n is bigger than 2 so bigger for n equal to 2 we have already done it okay so i think today this is enough so next time we will continue with more examples okay so that we are thorough with these concepts uh, s not s1 s2 so thank you that's all today